Well, hello everybody. This is Kelly. Obviously, since you're watching my videos, but you may not know my name. My name is Kelly. Um, today, what I want to do is um, I'm making a journal, actually. But it's a little different, maybe. At least it's different than any I've seen. Um, I'm making this one specifically for my dad. It's a prayer journal. And I asked him what color palette he liked. And he chose. So this is what I'm doing. What I did was I cut out just this regular old cardstock. Um, I don't even know the weight. It's just the stuff you grab off the shelf at Walmart. Okay. Um, regular old cardstock. Uh, I believe I cut it, well, it's 11 inches across and 6 inches tall. And then I just folded them in half. Okay, now I cut a bunch of them. And then I took four of them because I wanted four different signatures for this journal. And I decoupaged napkins, Mod Podge napkins over the top. And this had to do with the color palette that he chose. You know, so this one I did with a Paris theme. Very muted to tones. Which I think is really, really pretty. Very elegant. Okay. And then there was this one, which I really love. I wish I could find napkins like this. Um, I know this was a gift to me in a happy mail, but I wish I could find some because I would snag these up in a heartbeat. I think they're beautiful. Um, there's that one, and then there's that one. And then this one. So you can kind of see the theme. This one's got a little bit more oranges in it, but still it matches with the, um, you know, the pits of the avocados here. And it matches with the colors in the flowers here. So, all right. Now, inside each of these signatures, I'll just do the top one offhand. Uh, okay, there's one two, three, four, okay, yeah, one, two, three, four, so there's five uh, cardstock pieces in each, but between the cardstock, I've got some line paper, as my dad's my dad didn't want one filled with all kinds of frilly junk and tags and things like that. He wanted something he could actually write in and with space to add his own pictures and things like that. Well, he's a guy, you know, he's not into frillies. But what I did for the, the writing spot, instead of trying to make a bunch of journal cards, which are beautiful, don't get me wrong, but I'm tailoring this for my dad's needs. So I took some uh, binder paper, right? And I cut about an inch and a quarter off of one side. And then I cut all the way up to the line where the holes were on the other side. All right. And then I just folded them over. Like you see here. Okay. And I'm going to take them on the front. Okay. Because this will lift up. on the front of each of these cards, just on the front or the open facing, and I'm going to put one or two on the front of each. I believe I may just do one. Depends. If I have a bunch left over, then I will. But I'm leaving this side blank because, you know, for dad. I mean, I'll probably stamp it or decorate it, but... Uh, just background stuff. Um, he likes to do uh, prayer journals and things like that. So 
This is kind of what I'm hoping he'll use it for. Let me put that one there. Put that one there. But he wanted something that he could write in and actually use, not just put it on a shelf somewhere. And so that's what I'm trying to give him. And letting him have a say in how it's decorated. And what I may do is I may just put a pocket on the back half of the signature. That way, if he has any other pictures or anything that he wants to add to it, little his own mementos, then he has some place to put them. So, but that's one, okay? And I hadn't organized the others yet because I was kind of trying to put it all together and see what, you know, what he might like. But aside from that, not a whole lot new has been going on. My son moved to Texas. Some of you may know that already. Uh, he's the last one of my children to be out of state now. And so now I feel like I'm all alone. All I have is my dad. But seriously. I mean, I don't have any family down here. The closest family I have is in Mississippi. It's about a three-hour drive from where I'm at. I decided to do the line paper this way only because, you know, it's a lot easier to journal and write on if the lines are horizontal and you have some. But if I did it, you know, like the other journal or like the pages would suggest and stuck it in that way, then the lines would have been vertical. Wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense to me anyway. But, uh, yeah, so I don't have, you know, family down here. And I always grew up in a big family, so this is going to be a kind of a, what do you call it? Um, a rude awakening for me, I'm guessing. Um, he moved to Texas to live next to, well, to live on my daughter, in one of my daughter's um, properties. So they're together, you know, at least brother and sister. And then I have another daughter that's in New Mexico. And then another daughter that lives in Kentucky. Now she's only probably about two and a half, maybe three hours, not even that far, probably about two and a half hours from me. <sighs> But where she lives, I won't go. So I don't get to see her unless she comes down here. And the only time she comes down here is when she wants something. So but you know, it is what it is. Kids have to move off and Go their own way and maybe they'll remember their parents or their mom anyway sometime down the road you know I look back and I remember when I was in California and my dad was in Michigan how uh, you know there was times that would go by that I didn't call him and now with it you know all my children being out of state kind of know how he feels and I feel bad about it but he and I have talked about it and reasoned it through and you know he said he didn't push he didn't nag he didn't do anything like that oh okay so he gave us a chance to find our own way which I thought was pretty cool, you know, but still, 
I'm sure, well, I know these, it sucked because I'm dealing with that now and I'm not really happy with my kids being out of state. And I'm a woman, I'm a, a mom, so I'm authorized. So, but yeah, right now all I'm doing is just trying to spread out the papers I have. Evenly throughout all four signatures. Because I did have them clumped up in one pile and Dad says he wouldn't like that. So, he says spread them out. So I am. And if I have extra papers, I will tuck them in there somewhere. You know, but this way at least there's some writing every time you flip a page. Getting ready for my auction, you guys. It's in it's one week from tomorrow. Yay. Um, if you're watching my videos for the first time, I'm having a live auction for uh, craft craft things. Um, some I've made. Some uh, have been donated to me for the auction. It'll be on August 4th, 2018 at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm not doing the auction just for pocket money, actually. I'm trying to raise money for some teeth. <laughs> I had a, a bad medical experience not too long ago, and it honestly made all my top teeth fall out, my front teeth, and some of my back teeth. Uh, a doctor over-medicated me, and uh, almost killed me, to be honest. And no, I can't go back and get any medical recourse or anything like that. But he doubled my um, my blood thinners. A normal human, <laughs> I will say human, because I did not feel human at the end of this. Uh, their their INR, which is the thinness or the thickness of your blood is supposed to be between 2.0 and 3.0. And um, from what I understand, someone with a bleeding disorder, disorder like hemophilia, uh, their INR is normally, you know, two to three times higher than that. Like if your numbers get up to six, then they usually, they'll put you on, some, some doctors will go ahead and put you on a vitamin K diet to help thicken your blood. If it's above nine, a lot of times they'll put you in the hospital because you could bump into something and bruise underneath your skin, not know it, and be bleeding internally. And um, when all was said and done, and my teeth were falling out and everything because my gums were receding so bad they had thinned out that there was nothing there to hold anything up, so to speak. And um, so my teeth just started falling out. And when they tested my numbers, my numbers were 13.5. Yeah, I could have sneezed burst a membrane in my nose and bled to death. That's how serious that was. Okay, I have a little bit left over, so let's let's put them in here somewhere. I'll double them up every so often. 
So, needless to say, I went to Kentucky for six months because they had a dental program that I qualified for that, you know, would have helped me. And then I couldn't stay, I couldn't stay in Kentucky, so I ended up having to come back here. And where I'm at, they don't have, um, they don't have uh, dental. So my church has helped some, but I don't expect them to, you know, to pay for my medical or dental or whatever. So I figured this way. I tried a GoFundMe account one time, but I really didn't like it because I don't like the idea of begging people for money. That, to me, I just, I can't do it. Okay, where did that one go? There it is. So I figured this way, I'll sell something. And like I said, there are some people that donated and I am so absolutely grateful. To, um, to them for that. Now, if you're interested in some of the items, not all of the items, but some of the items that are in, that are going to be in the auction, I did do a, an auction preview video. Um, on my channel. So if I remember to link it, I will put the link in the description below. Um, but if not, you know, Hey, it's there. <laughs> I would be really happy to see you all. Uh, there will be free giveaways. Well, free giveaways. Duh, that's kind of redundant. There will be giveaways periodically throughout the auction. There will be live entertainment. And... Oh, good gracious. Where did the cover and all that go? Huh. Okay, let me pause for just a minute. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I couldn't find where I put the cover and the, uh, the back. I was like, ah. Okay, so I did the inside cover. As, you know, with napkins. On the outside, let's see, this is the back page. I painted that, um... I gessoed it and then I painted it a metallic blue. I forget the color offhand. This is the front cover. Um, I'm not done with the cover, obviously, because I want to find some blue and silver ribbon, maybe gold, blue and ro gold ribbon, and I'm going to um, outline the, the napkin because I don't like the edges as, as wonky as they are. But for all intents and purposes, the front cover and the back cover are done. Now what I'm going to do, what I want to do anyway, whether I will do it or not, it remains to be seen. Uh, Dad says he liked the, uh, the blue jean look. I'm not going to do it right at the moment, but... I think I'm going to, when after I get it all bound and everything, I'm going to do the binding in uh, blue jean. Now, he does want it sewn in, so I'm going to sew the signature in. But I'm going to do it like a five stitch hold as opposed to um, just a three. I just don't remember how to do that. <laughs> I could do the three really, really well, but so we'll set that off to the side. Some people put their signatures in right away. I don't. Um, I want to decorate mine first. 
And how I'm going to decorate it, I have no idea. But as it's going to be a prayer journal, I might as well, I might go ahead and decorate with some Bible pages and some beautiful uh, scrapbook pages. So I may do that. Oh wow, brain cramp. All right. So let me pause. I'm going to get some uh, scrapbook paper and make sure I've got all my supplies and I will be right back. And okay, I'm back. Um, what I did was I had dad pick out some uh, paper from a paper pack I had some coordinating paper that he liked that he would want in the in the journal so that's what I did I had him pick it out now first thing before we do and this is probably going to be very boring and I may um, pause it just to finish it up but I need to attach the papers to the uh, the inside of this and I'm, to do that I'm just going to use some double sided tape uh, and then I'll reinforce it you know with some beautiful washi tape and you know stuff like that but uh, yeah for all intents and purposes I'm going to have to attach this in here somehow and I don't know how I should do that so I'm going to stop for a minute so you guys don't you know, watch me catch anything flammable on fire while the gears start working in my head. And I will be right back. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm on the last signature, and there's not very many in here, so I'm just going to do this one on camera. That away. So, what I did was, um, I just took each piece of paper at the very top, just put a piece of double stick tape on it on one side. I didn't go all the way to the ends. I wasn't, you know, super particular, just enough to make sure that it's stuck. And if there was a spot where there were doubles, you know, where I put two pieces um, say, for instance, it looked like this, you know, where I had two pieces in there. I took a piece of double stick tape and just put it on the inside of the fold, tucked it in, flattened it, creased it. They're stuck together. No big deal. And then stuck them in there as is. You know, I'm not super worried that this thing is going to go through the sinking of the Titanic. Because my dad will be writing on it, using it, and I want to make it at least sturdy enough where it won't fall apart on him. And that's why I put each of the signatures in their own little, um, their own little cover, you know. It's like I gave each of the signatures their own... Uh, treatment. And last one. Oh, nope, not last one. Sorry, looked like it. Okay, that's the last one. Okay. I went ahead and just did all the tape on them because it was a lot easier than, you know, flipping a page and then pulling it out and yada yada. So, I didn't tape the whole thing down. No need. Oh, that one was kind of close. Oh, well, we'll do the next one out a little bit. And it's not like I'm measuring each and every one 
to specifically how far from the top and how far from the inside and outside. And, you know, you can do that. Absolutely. If that's, you know, what you want. But I'm liking the organic handmade feel. And I know it's something my dad would like as well. So that's how I'm kind of leaving it. And see. But on the same note, <laughs> this one's almost done. This is the last um, signature that I'm doing this in, and then we can start to semi-decorate it. Like I said, I'm not getting too fancy or ornate because my dad, honestly, he's into oversimplified elegance. Not just simple elegance. He, was, he likes it oversimplified. That's what I call it. You know, he'll be happy to put Maybe one print or one picture on, on a wall that's 16 feet long. Mm. And then one recliner on that same wall. And he's happy. Oh, no, not me. I've got to have a vignette. I've got to have the picture and the sconces and maybe, you know, some decorative embellishments and things like that. I've got to fill that wall with space and feeling. That's my, that's my thing. Oh, we have an extra. So, I guess I will put that on the back page. Maybe not this one because of that. Yeah, why not? Or I can just put it right here. Let's do that. There. Now all four signatures have their papers in them. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew each individual signature together on its own. And then I will hand stitch them, all four of them, into the binding on the journal. So I think that's what I'll do. And now I'd rather do that than try and decorate any more. So... Give me a second. I will sew these in. I'm going to have to change the color because I don't think bright red is really what, well, maybe. Anyway, I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I'm back. And not the greatest job, but I think that one was the best one. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, but all the signatures are sewn together. So now I know they're not going to fall apart while I'm working on them. Maybe that's why some people do that ahead of time, but that's okay. I was also, I went ahead because I had made um, some mini journals the other day and I wanted to sew these signatures in so we can see that. And so there was two signatures in here and I kind of like the idea of a signature cover. It just kind of makes it neater to me. I haven't decorated the inside yet. But, um, everybody calls, you know, some, well, not everybody, but oh, there's a lot of people that call their purses a pocketbook. And that never made sense to me. Unless, you know, it was like the clutches that looked like a small book. But these are perfect for pocketbooks because you can stick them in your pocket. But, uh, yeah, I'll probably put a pocket on the inside of this one and a pocket on the inside of this side and then give it away 
and the other one I made, uh, let me get, actually I made two more. Let's see, I made this one. Um, and then I put some triple thick over the top because I didn't really, I didn't really want to color it in. I liked the brown on brown effect with the aged. So these were some of my stamps that I just threw together a collage and, and then this signature, what I did was I just rubber banded it in. And then there's a pocket on the back and a pocket on the front. So there's that one. And then this one I made from a recycled manila or file folder. And then there's a pocket on the front and a pocket on the back. And this one I sewed in. So these were some of them. I said I haven't finished them yet, but I will going to put them out or send them out in a, what do you call it, uh, in a challenge for um, Stacy's group, Pink Poodle Crafts. Um, she's got a mini challenge going on right now to make six different mini things and then sending them out. So those are my three mini journals. And then I've got a couple of other things that I'm going to do, uh, which came across my brain last night. And I thought, oh, how cute. So we'll set those aside and we will work on this. So one signature at a time. First signature. And we will set these over here. Okay. Now with this one, let's see which color we like best with this one. I kind of like this. All right, so let's see what the inside is. So we'll say five and a quarter. It's a little bit less than. And then five and a quarter by five and three quarters. We'll do that. So we'll go five and a quarter across and I've got to make a mark this way or I'll forget which way and then turn them sideways and then the words won't be horizontal. They'll be up and down. So we said it was five and a... Okay. <laughs> See, I don't do math. All right. There's a reason for this. Okay. So it'll be... Five and three quarters up and down. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Uh-oh, I lost my what you call it. My eraser. Okay, so we got five and three quarters up and down. And then five and a quarter across. So let's do that. Okay. Yep, I dropped my eraser. I don't really need one because it's got an eraser on it. All right, so let's set this one aside for the moment and pull up our handy dandy paper cutter. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, please tell me I didn't mess it up. <laughs> okay, yes, I know I am terrible, 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 terrible. Oops. Okay. Perfect, I think. We'll know more once I get it at or once I get it measured. 
or taped in. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Like I said, my dad's into um, oversimplified elegance. Me, I would call it, I like simple elegance, okay? But there's got to be some substance. I don't like, you know, overdoing it so to speak. My dad will say yes. Every time I add anything to anything, I've already overdone it and ruined it. But that's okay. I'm just going to put one piece across the center. <sighs> now, I'm sure a lot of you probably already know this, but if you don't, if you manage to have a little bit extra on your tape, roll like that. You don't have to freak about it. Just take it and roll it back on itself. Fold it back over on itself and it disappears. Some people know this. Some people don't. And like, if you're anything like me, I'll tell you what. The things that are the most obvious half the time totally slip my mind. Like it took me, oh my gosh. <laughs> If you guys had watched my my blooper video, holy moly, I had so many mess ups that time. And it took me forever to figure out how to make a daggone baby white flower. Oh, and I forgot to take off the tape in the center. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull this off real quick because I... Not so far. Oh, no, I didn't. Yay. Yay. It hasn't stuck quite yet. Whew. Yeah, I know. I'm crazy mess. Okay, there, much better, much better. All right, so we've got that one. Let's put this one here. See this way, if I mark it all the way on the front, ah, take it all the way down. This way I won't totally mess it up, right? That's not quite enough. A little sliver. But yeah, Dad had surgery last week uh, on his shoulder. He found a lot more damage in there than they anticipated. So he's got quite a recovery process going on. Then when he heals up from that, I get to have my surgery on my knee 
uh, I ripped or tore, whatever you call. Well, let's see. 1987. I had just turned 18 years old. And I was, my nephew was born on November 4th at like just after midnight, but it was, you know, it was on the 4th of November and I was there with my sister and I got to see him being born, which was the most awesome thing. I mean, I was on the receiving end. Okay. You know, it's like catch. <laughs> it was awesome. So he was born just after midnight on the 4th and, um, that was in Albuquerque. Well, all of our family was back in Michigan. So, you know, after recovery and, and, you know, the baby visiting the nursery and all of that and all the phone calls, uh, I probably made it home about 4.30, maybe 5 o'clock in the morning. Of course, I had to have my snuggle time. Um, and I got up late for the bus to go to work. So... I had my roommate give me a ride. Uh, he was, well, he was my boyfriend at the time. Give me a ride on his motorcycle. It was only a couple miles away. I figured, you know, no problem. I worked at a clothing store in the mall. And, uh, let's do this one. Nope, let's do the plain one. Anyway. Well, on the way to the mall, I got into a motorcycle wreck. Well, we did, not just me. I was on the, I, I was a passenger, so, you know, I wasn't holding on to anything but his waist. We got hit on the left side by a car. And the bike fell, and I went flying about uh, 30 yards head first into a telephone pole. Um, it broke my back in three places. It broke my neck in two. Shattered my left leg. And, you know, split my head wide open like a ripe watermelon. Um... And I died three times that day. Yep. But by the grace of God, I did not stay dead. I did slip into a coma for 19 days. They called it a waking coma. I've never heard that before. But part of it, um, I was awake, but I had no, no, um, awareness of what was going on around me. Nothing. It was like I was brain dead and I'm just watching a movie that I can't remember. And the first thing I ever remember after making it back to coherency, first thing I ever remember the doctor saying was, you will never walk again. Now picture this, okay? I'm 18 years old. I had my whole life ahead of me. And a doctor's telling me I'm never going to walk again. I was not the most filtered teenager <laughs> that you will ever come across. And the first three words I ever remember uttering were kiss my ass. Because I thought, honestly, there is no way I am going to not walk. And took me 
about, let's see, eight months altogether before I was able to go back to high school, get my diploma, and I walked commencement with no, um, with no help. I had, I wasn't on crutches, didn't have a cane, no wheelchair, nothing. So that was my miracle. All right. Well, the accident itself, when we got hit by the car and it shattered my left leg, it also ripped three of the four sets of tigaments, I'm, tigaments, ligaments, I mean, in tendons, it just snapped them. So if I was sitting down and I had my knees raised, right, with my foot flat on the ground, you could take my shin bone and move it like this. And my knee wouldn't move. That's how unstable it was. So it was 92 when they finally did a complete knee replacement. And I was fine for a while. Well, this same knee, I ripped the ACL. I don't know how. Might have been when I fell a few years ago. Uh, my dinghy butt tripped over my, co my computer cord, my laptop charger cord. And I came down really, really hard on my left leg, and then I twisted and fell. And there was another time I missed a step on my back porch, and I just, I like jumped down all four steps and landed on my left leg. So it could have been then, too. You never know. All right, let's do a pocket back here. But I want to do it a little bit sturdier, so I'm going to use some cardboard. So yeah, hmm, not that sturdy because I don't think my, I don't think I can score it that well. Let me see. Oh, I can use a manila envelope. That'll score nicely. So. To tell you all, all of that, to tell you <laughs> that um, let me go ahead and just cut that straight, that I've got to have surgery again. And this time to replace my ACL, and I'm hoping when they go in, they won't find more damage, you know, than, uh, than is technically supposed to be there. But we'll see. But I can't do that until Dad recovers from his. You know, in case something goes wrong, well, that's not straight. can't do that now because I already scored it. Let's see if that's straighter. Oh yeah. So now I have to wait. Which is, you know, no problem. No problem at all. Oh, I did that on the wrong side. Oh, that's okay. It'll fold. I'm cutting out the little notches so when you fold them in, it doesn't leave a big bunch there or a big knot there. And before we do that, let's see, I've got a little piece of this. No, I don't want that. Well, I don't know what to use. 
Oh, yes, I did. Use. Let's use some. Bible stuff. Yeah, that's the ticket. <clears throat> Whoops. So Dad will have to have his surgery. When he heals, I'll have mine. And also classes start up at the end of September, so... fun once a week on Mondays uh, our church has well we're part of a satellite college called Faith Bible Institute out of Monroe Louisiana and that's what I want right there well I don't want it that way it's cockeyed crooked and so we meet on Mondays and it's an accredited college okay alright give me just a second let me finish this up and then I can pause it so we're going to do that right there that right there anyway so as I we have, there's six semesters, takes three years to go through. A lot of our church members have gone through this <laughs> half a dozen times. I'm the director, so I go through it every, you know, every time. I stopped, well, the church stopped for a while because there wasn't anybody else, and the church pays for it. All right. Anyways, it's accredited college. You do get credit for, um, you know, that are transferable, credits that are transferable to a secular college. But I was raised in church all my life. And the first three years that I took this this class when I got my diploma from it, uh, I learned more in the three years in this class than I did my entire life. And it was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So. All right. I'm going to leave that right up there. Let it dry. I'm going to pause. Go pick up my car from the repair shop. And I will see you guys in a few minutes. Hi, everybody. I'm back. And that's dried. So we will trim this. sitting here trying to eat an ice cream at the same time. I guess I probably should have eaten my ice cream and then got back on. But, you know what? That makes too much damn sense. <laughs> so. Okay, but getting back to that Bible college. Yeah, it's called Faith Bible Institute. We jokingly call it FBI. So if you ever hear me say, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go to FBI. You know. Then that's why. So, let's set that right there. Make sure these will fold again. See, I got me a drumstick. So that's the kookiest looking drumstick ice cream I have ever seen in my life.
Okay. Uh, I don't think my double face tape is going to hold that. So I have a feeling. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I know most people absolutely freak out. I've had a lot of people say not very nice things about me using Bible pages. Let me tell you something. I send some out, which I haven't lately because too many people just meow, meow, meow about it. And I look at it this way. I've got 11 Bibles. Okay. Two of them are study Bibles. One's a devotional Bible. One's a Bible I take to church. They're all the same. Okay. I don't have a bunch of different um, translations. They're all um, King James Version or New King James Version. Those are the only two I use. And I have some that I've used for so long and so often that um, they're falling apart. I mean, literally, I've got chapters and, and books and everything just falling out of the Bible. And I thought, because it's a beautiful texture paper, it's almost like that onion skin paper. Um, why throw it out when you can craft with it? And when you craft with it and you give it away, what a better way to spread the word, spread the Bible. Now, it offends some people, and I don't send it to people who it offends. But it's just me. Not everybody's going to do the same thing. Okay, we are going to do the Tombow. I'm not real happy with this glue. Because it's just, when it gets on your hands, it never wants to leave. Never, never, never. Oops. But it's the only thing I have with an itty bitty nozzle at the moment. So it'll have to do. <clears throat> but I fold in the edges for the pocket and give it a little bit of room inside. So that way, you know, you have room to put stuff in there. Now, with that like that, let me get some clips. Okay, here's my little drawer of clips. And I will do that until, you know, it dries. Hold the edges down. Big old paper clips. I love these things. There. Let me do one in the middle. So that's one pocket. If you look, if you see these right here, hold on, let me put this back.
these are my first try at paper beads. Well, actually, these are right here. They're the first ones I have glazed as well. And I'm probably going to have to put about four more coats on them because to me they don't feel very sturdy. Alright, and then here's my second batch. So these have one coat on them. And I use them around a skewer. I don't know if you can see those very well. There they are. Right, and that was my very first try. So I'm not a very good one, but you know, hey. Alright, then these were my next try. A little bit better. I have two tube beads or cylinder beads is what they're called, and then the other ones are just traditional. There we go. And these don't have a coating on them, and I can see right there that my uh, the glue didn't hold, so I'll have to re-glue that. All right. Then these were my next set. There's a couple of cylinder beads in there, and some of them didn't completely, you know, close up. But, hey, oops, dropped one. Getting a little better. And none of these are coated, except that first little batch. And then these I really like, and I did these over a, a, a toothpick, and I like that much, much better. This one, what I did was I took a paint marker and I edged just the very edge of the uh, this one right here. I'll pull that one out. Uh, anyways, see how much better they look? They're a lot more even, a lot more uniform. And this one, what I did was, um, whoops, on the strip, I didn't edge it on the top or anything. This white strip right here, right along the edge, that's the only thing I got any um, gold paint marker on. And that's how that one looks. So it gave it a little bit of a depth. Um, I figure, you know, hey, while this was drying, I might as well show you what I've been attempting. Now, I've been trying to watch videos on how to, uh, you know, glaze and what's the best way to do it. And Jenny Belly, I know a lot of you know who she is. She's got a really beautiful channel. She took some of her clay and made, um, whatever, a stand. So I did this yesterday. It's still drying. It's an air dry clay I'm using. Um, what it's for is when this is ready, I can stick my toothpicks in there. See that? And hold my beads on it while they dry to uh, glaze them. It gives me something just to hold on to. Hold on to them. So it was something. Well, like I said, I only glazed those first few and I only did one coat on them, so they need a few more coats because they're still really soft in my opinion, and this isn't quite dried yet. And once it dries, I'll probably paint it or glaze it or something just to give it some more sturdiness. But it's about a half inch thick. I guess that's, yeah, about a half inch thick. But I made it last night, so it's not quite dry yet. Alright, so we'll let that one dry off to the side. That's one of my baby wipes I used to clean up the paint I was using to paint the covers of this yesterday. And that will be turned into baby, baby wipe flowers. So, so this is what we've got so far.
All right, I've got four signatures that I've sewn in, actually just sewn together, and then I'll hand stitch them into the binding, or yeah, the binding, whatever it's called. I've got paper already put into them. I haven't done any of the edges yet. I'm still working. There's my first pocket on the inside. And then here's the second one. I haven't done anything to. And the third one. And the fourth. And uh, on that note, I'm at an hour and three minutes. And I'm going to let this go for now. I'm going to let you guys go. And I will uh, finish this up in a part two. Okay? Uh, remember, always find the humor in life. Because if you don't, life sucks. Always remember to give yourself the freedom to art yourself silly. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Um... And if you want notifications of when I give, or when I do my videos, um, click the little bell icon. And uh, on top of all of that, don't forget my auction on August 4th. I'd love to see you there. I'd love to see you win something. Even if you don't buy something, you have the opportunity to win a free giveaway. Uh, and I think that's about it. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks for coming.